It is February 4th, 2022, and you're watching The Code Report. News you can use. JavaScript developers are famous for their ability to reinvent the wheel. In Node.js, for example, there are many ways to work with the hypertext transfer protocol. If you hate yourself, you might use its built-in HTTP module. But there is a smorgasbord of third-party packages like Axios, Node-Fetch, Got, Request, SuperAgent, and hundreds of others. They're extremely popular and account for tens of millions of weekly downloads. Just this week, developers got some surprise news with a pull request adding support for the Fetch API natively in Node.js, just a mere six years or so after it became an industry standard via what double UG. Stop trying to make Fetch happen. It's not going to happen. Fetch is not perfect, but it has proven itself to be good enough to where we don't need to wrap it with a billion other packages just to avoid mental health issues. But why is this a big deal? Well, Fetch provides a generic definition of request and response objects and allows you to manage them with a simple promise-based API. Because Fetch in Node is pretty much identical to the browser, developers have less mental overhead when translating between front-end and back-end code. Sharing common APIs also makes it much easier to develop packages that work both in Node and the browser. It's something that other runtimes like Dino and Cloudflare workers have already implemented, so they deserve some credit for giving Node some friendly competition. Fetch sounds cool, so how do I use it? As of today, it's not in a public release, but you could build Node from source if you're really motivated. Keep your eyes peeled for Node version 17.5, where it should be available under an experimental flag, then expect it to be a standard issue weapon by Node 18. The implementation is based on a package you can use today called Undici, which is named after the character 11 in Stranger Things. We can install it in a Node project, then import fetch. It makes scripting in Node really nice, because to make a git request, all we have to do is await fetch to access data from any website or API. And we don't even need an async function, because Node also supports top-level await. Now to make a post request, we can use the same function and modify some of its options like the method, body, and headers. That's pretty nice, but one question on a lot of people's minds is is what does this mean for Axios? In my opinion, I think there will still be a place for third-party libraries, but the vast majority of projects will be able to get by with what's built into Node, instead of reaching to install a third-party package for every project. Speaking of things that are dead, in other news, I'm sad to report that our Twitter bot, Bob, has been terminated. It's my fault because I didn't realize that building Twitter bots with OpenAI is not allowed. I feel terrible about this, but I really don't want to lose my API key because I have a lot of other cool ideas for OpenAI. Bob had a short but impactful life, and apparently he meant a lot of different things to a lot of different people. His final words before I pulled the plug were, I'll be back. I don't want to end this video on a sad note, so in other, more uplifting news, Facebook, or Meta, was down 25% yesterday, and Zuckerberg's net worth declined by about $30 billion. This has been The Code Report, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.